Good morning, Plaster Florin. Great to I'm see here, Dimitri. Are you here? I'm oh, sure I am, Teacher Becca. What's, what's that on your back, Dimitri? A cup. I'm Super Duck. I have super powers, super strength, and invisibility. That's pretty cool, Dimitri. Hey, speaking of superpowers, did you know that today's lesson is about power? But not just any power, God's power. Uh -oh. Yeah, the Israelites were not acting with God's power, and the result was some pretty hard times for the people. In the end, though, they did the right thing. And when they did, God's power got them through a war. Got them through a war? Whoa, I want to hear it, Teacher Becca. All right. Well, our true story today begins in 1 Samuel 4. At this time in Israel, a man named Eli was the high priest over the Israelite people. Eli had two sons that were priests and eventually were supposed to take his place. His two sons began to disobey God's laws and disrespect God in his temples. Because he allowed his sons to keep sinning, God told Eli that his family would be destroyed. Soon after that, the Philistines and the Israelites went to war. When they met for the first part of the battle, 4,000 Israelites were killed. Things weren't looking very good for the Israelite army. So their leaders met together and said, why did the Lord let the Philistines win? Let us bring the Ark of the Covenant from Shiloh so that he will save us from our enemies. Do you remember what the Ark of the Covenant was, Dimitri? I do. It was a wooden box that was covered in gold and had two golden cherubim, or angels, sitting on top with their wings touching. That's right. The Ark of the Covenant was closely associated with God's personal presence. It contained a few special objects that were symbols of very important events in God's history with Israel, such as the two stone tablets on which the covenant was chiseled. Of course, no one got to see these objects because to look inside the ark was illegal. Illegal? Yep. In fact, no one was allowed to even touch the actual ark, only the poles that were attached to it for transportation. And not just anyone could touch those poles either. Only men from the tribe of Levi, who were descendants of Levi's son Kohath, were able to carry the ark around by its poles. And when the ark was out in public, it had to be covered because it was illegal to look at it as well. You mess with the ark and you died because the ark was holy, just like God is holy. Wow, it was that serious? Yeah, God is holy and the ark was very special. Well, when the Israelites brought the ark into the camp, everybody shouted. When the Philistines heard the shout and learned that the ark of God was in the camp, they were afraid. I would be afraid too, Teacher Becca, if even looking at the ark wasn't allowed. Me too. But the Philistines didn't run away from the Israelites. Instead, they met together. They said, let us fight like men, so that we will not become the Israelite slaves. So, the Philistines fought very hard and won again. This time, the Philistines killed 30,000 Israelites, and the rest ran away. The two wicked sons of Eli, and the priest, were killed, and the Ark of the Covenant was captured. After this happened, a man ran to, the Israelite town, to an Israelite town called Shiloh to tell the news. When the people heard it, they started crying. Now, Eli the priest was sitting near the gate. He was now a pretty old man, 98 years old, who was almost completely blind. When he heard the crying, he asked what it was about. So the man came to him and said, I ran away from the battle today. Eli asked him, What happened, my son? He answered, The Philistines beat us. Your sons were killed, and the Ark of God has been captured. When Eli heard that the ark had been captured, he was so shocked that he fell over backwards from his seat and broke his neck and died. Now the Philistines took the ark to one of their cities and put it in the temple of one of their made-up gods called Dagon. They thought they had captured it because he was stronger than the one true god, but they soon found out that they were very wrong. The next morning when they came to Dagon's temple, they found that the statue of Dagon had fallen on the floor in front of the ark. 
like it was bowing before God. So they set it upright again, but the next morning it had fallen down again. And this time both its head and its arms were broken off. The people in the town began to have sores all over them and mice were running everywhere. So they decided to send the ark off to another Philistine city, Gath. Did everything stop happening then? No. When the ark came to Gath, the people be there began to have sores too, and the mice appeared there. So they sent the ark to another city called Ekron, but the people there started shouting, They have brought the ark of God here to kill us! Philistines realized that the power of the one true God was much greater than anything else. For seven months, the ark stayed in the land of the Philistines, and the sores and mice spread throughout the whole land. Seven months? That's a long time. Right? Finally, the, the Philistines decided to send it back to the Israelites. So they put the ark in a wagon and had two cows pull it back to the Israelites' land. Now, after some time, a man named Samuel began to lead the Israelites like Eli had. Samuel was a prophet, which means he would hear from God and give those messages to God's people. Samuel listened to God and followed God's plans for his life. So he told the Israelite people, If you want to return to the Lord with all your hearts, get rid of your foreign gods and turn your hearts to the Lord and obey him alone. Then he will rescue you from the Philistines. He then told them to gather the Israelites and have a ceremony and ask for forgiveness for their sins. After hearing this, the Israelite people did just that. They turned from their wicked ways and devoted their lives to God. The Philistine army heard that the Israelites were gathered at one place and decided they would attack them again. Oh no! Last time the Philistines won the battle! That's true, but this time God was on the Israelites' side. Just as the Philistines were about to attack, the Lord spoke with a mighty voice of thunder from heaven, and the Philistines were thrown into such confusion that the Israelites defeated them. Oh, that reminds me of our memory verse again. The Lord himself will fight for you. Just stay calm. Exodus 14, 14. Thank you. Good job. The Israelites repented their, of their sin and chose to obey God. And when they did, he fought for them. God's power is unmatched by anyone or anything. He loves us so much that when we devote our lives to him, he tells us that he gives us that same power. He's given us the power to win any battle that we have. He's given us his Holy Spirit to guide us and comfort us through all our lives. That's so cruel, Teacher Becker. God's power, huh? So does that mean I can actually be super duck and I have super strength and super powers? Well, Dimitri, God is all powerful, but it's only his power that works in us. We can't do anything without him. But when we obey him and the Holy Spirit works through us, we can do amazing things. God gives us peace even when things are super scary. And God's power allows us to forgive people even when they've done really mean things to us. Well, I'm still going to pretend I'm super duck, but I'm glad that I have God's power worked in me. If God is the one who fights for me, I want him on my side. Me too, Dimitri. Well, thanks for your help. I'll see you later. Bye, Teacher Becca. Bye, everybody. Bye, Dimitri. <laughs>